everybody doing well? Good to see you guys again. It's too freaking soon, but come on. That's <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you play into June. For sure. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, how is your thumb? And then uh, bigger picture, I know you played with Clay before uh, with Team USA, but what was your reaction uh, to finding out that you were going to be teammates full-time with him? Uh, yeah, well, my hand's a lot better. Um, unfortunate uh, circumstances, but also uh, I think it was, it was it was much needed in terms of uh, just how to slow down after a long season like we had. And uh, I was playing, you know, three days after we uh, lost in the finals just because I didn't know how to transition out of uh, just that competitive space. It's, it's been a minute since I've been able to be at that top level. Um, and it hurt a lot. It was disappointing. And all I knew at that time was go to the gym and get some more work in. Uh, so uh, I think breaking my hand gave me a lot much needed rest time. Uh, it took me about eight weeks uh, to heal from that. So from about, you know, July or so, beginning of July until now, I've just been trying to get back and uh, get into the swing of the rhythm of basketball um, and also uh, take um, more uh, time to rest and recover. You know, again, the summers are always filled with obligations and responsibilities. And, um, you know, you guys get a brief uh, view on my social media, what I'm doing. Uh, but, yeah, I'm usually busy. And uh, this summer I, I got a chance to travel with my family to Italy, to Egypt, to Greece. Um, then I finished my summer in uh, Thailand and China. Got a chance to experience that with my family and my Anta team and other brands that I work with and other great partners. Uh, so yeah, my hand's doing well. Um, and then to answer your second question, Clay, that was uh, a big splash in the summertime. Um, I was letting kind of you guys, the media, give the excitement and what you guys thought of us uh, all of a sudden becoming a big three now <laughs> between me, Luca, and Clay. And I think uh, if you ask any of us, we feel like uh, we got better as a team. Uh, we got better as a, a group that has uh, leadership and also experience, especially on that championship stage. Um, you know, it's easy to uh, kind of quote unquote convince Clay to come here because of just uh, what I had experienced thus far in the past year and a half of just being. Uh, welcomed and embraced, and I don't mean that cliche. I mean that truthfully here in the, in the South, in Dallas. Southern hospitality is real. This team does a great job of protecting you, um, not just on the court, but off the court. And they go out of their way to uh, make sure you feel special. You know, and, and again, I don't mean to be cliche, but not every team, NBA team is the same. And I think uh, being here in Dallas uh, gave him an outsider's view of just what it could be like for him. So I'm excited that he decided to come here, decided that he deci uh, decided to commit to us uh, for the next few years. And I feel like uh, our dreams can be possible because he's here now and he's added uh, some great value to our championship uh, aspirations. Kai, can you talk about um, Derrick Rose's legacy and just being able to play against him after re uh, retirement? Yeah, where where are you? Oh, okay, sorry, brother. Uh, say that one more time, I just want to make sure. Oh yeah, shout out to Poudini. Um, huge shout out to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Derrick Rose. Um, you know, it's, it's not like he's leaving the game forever. I think uh, it's, it's about time that he got his flowers um, and uh, he took full uh, control over his career of just how it was for him. I think we've all kind of been in, or tried to be in D. Rose's shoes of understanding what it's like to be a, at the top of your game, top of your craft, you're in your prime at 20 years old, and then to go through a traumatic injury like a torn ACL, and then have to go through um, an MCL injury, and then more surgeries. And I just uh, really admire a guy like that and respect a, a man like that because of, uh, of course, he takes care of his family and his wife, and that's just one thing to see. But the way that he's led by example for all of us um, in his own way. And he really taught me how to persevere. And, and um, I took things from his journey even before he got into the NBA um, and made it my own. Um, you know, he comes from a uh, rough side of Chicago. Statistics really said that he shouldn't have made it out. And uh, he carved away by utilizing basketball as a vehicle to put his family in a different position, put his friends in a different position. So. There's so many different things that I, I admire and respect about that guy um, because, you know, when I was 19 or I was 19 getting ready for the draft, I remember watching him uh, and I was in Chicago at a playoff game 
And uh, it was probably the first time I had told myself that I wasn't as uh, quick as somebody on the court or who uh, wasn't as explosive. Uh, I don't think we will ever see something like that again in that framework or frame of body. Obviously, we have comparisons, but when D. Rose came into the league, he really uh, set the point guard role at a different precedent, and uh, he made us all get better. You know, you look at the era of point guards I grew up in with Russ, D. Rose, Steph. Um, you know, obviously, you got the late, uh, uh, late later in his uh, career, J. Kidd, Steve Nash, John Wall. Um, Damian Lillard, all of us have taken bits and pieces from each other's games, um, but our stories is what connects us forever. So D. Rose is definitely on that list of some of my favorite people in the world and one of my favorite players. Uh, well, I was scared to sign my dad as a signature athlete initially because I wasn't sure about the response. And then I thought about the response and I just stopped caring right at that moment <laughs> um, just because of how elated I was to be able to sign my dad. And ultimately, when I sign my dad, it's like me signing my family. So um, to see him step into a new position, to understand and empathize with what I've had to deal with being a signature athlete since I was you know, 22 years old, he had to do photo shoots. He had to be on the road with me. He had to do everything that he had prepared me for. Um, so it was interesting to see the roles reversed and to see him be proud of signing autographs for fans and being able to have his own colorway, be able to honor his late wife, my mom. Um, so it's just all about us turning our struggle into our strength and being proud of our story and where we come from. Uh, you know, statistics said that my dad shouldn't have made it out either or my family, and we all made it out of the Bronx, New York, um, moved to New Jersey, and uh, now we're thriving and flourishing because we were able to sacrifice a lot of things that we loved when we were younger. They were younger, my aunts, my dad, my uncle, in order for us, the cousins, my kid, uh, you know, the kids now to be able to thrive. So uh, to pay that forward is it's amazing, and I don't take it for granted. Um, if anybody else out there is running a shoe brand, I'm not trying to give you any ideas, but signing your family is like, one of the greatest things you could do, one of the greatest accomplishments. Um, I love making sure uh, that he has his own shoe in the closet and he sees me on court wearing something that he designed, something that he was honoring our family with. So I know my family's proud, proud of him too. Kyrie, um, you know, one of the things that you've done really well in your career is finish at the rim. Sometimes you fall down. As you get older, are you mindful of that? Will you try to avoid, or do you try to avoid that as you get older just to, you trying to Avoid age me, bro? Injury. What's that? You trying to age me even more? No, we bro? all do. Like, yeah. No, is it like something I was, you know what I mean? I was drafted at 19. There's a few guys in my draft class that are like 35, 36 now. But no, no. I'll answer. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean to So you do you try to avoid that? Do you, do you try to put, are you mindful of it so you avoid those situations? So you just take yourself out of those uh, potential scary scenarios where something may just kind of go sideways on you? Uh, I mean, I, I think it, um, I, I would say the, the change or, um, you know, kind of the difference between uh, when I was 19, 20, my early years in, in attacking the rim versus now is just outside of injuries. It's just the, you know, when you're going up there with guys that are 7'2", 7 7'3", 7 or 6'10", with a lot of athleticism, you're going to take some hits and you just have to learn how to fall as well. And to all the young kids out there, or even some of my peers, just learning how to fall is also a key to longevity. Um, you can't control it all the time, but when you can um, do so, and that starts in the weight room, starts in the little nuances of the game that I work on to help me with my balance and just also my core strength and also being mentally confident and prepared for taking those hits. Um, and uh, I think even to add on to that, I've just become more of a two foot jumper than just a single foot jumper at the rim, uh, just being able to have more options off of two feet. And then if I do need to finish off of one, then still being aggressive and athletic, athletic enough to do so. Um, and I still think I can improve on my at the rim finishing. I think last year wasn't one of my best years of finishing at the rim, but I, I think it was, that's just my opinion, right? And it's my opinion. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I can still improve on, on just attacking the rim and, and being able to uh, finish more plays, especially uh, as I looked at the Western Conference Finals in the Celtics series. Uh, Chris Henderson, chando.com. This is a two part question for you. So you talked about the culture, right, in Dallas. The fans have embraced you. I want you to go back to the onset event in Deep Ellum and how big that was for the city and what you were able to do with that and just 
being able to embrace the fans so fast, like they they took you under their wing. And the second part is, you've done this twice now. So you when you, when you were with Nike, you and LeBron both had signature shoes. Mm-hmm. Now you're with the Mavericks and you're with Anta. You and Clay have signature shoes on the Anta. Can you talk about how cool that's going to be? And is there going to be a little competition who has the better looking PE? <laughs> uh, well, shout out to Deep Ellum um, for hosting us, Sneaker Politics. That was an incredible event. Uh, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, so I, I really had an open mind, uh, you know, to how you know, the rollout was going to happen, um, you know. But it, I, I think it, it went better than I, I dreamt, just because of again the warm embrace and, and also just the fans that pulled up. Whether they were a fan of me, and most importantly, whether they're a fan of Dallas, uh, they really showed love, and um, they showed my family love too. And I think even just to not mince my words or, or fall short on it, but um, you know, anytime you do something in a city you're not where you're not from or your state where you're not from, you just don't know how people are going to react. And especially when, um, you know, you have to use product as, as a communicating piece or art as a communicating piece. Uh, I'm as human as they come, so I try to engage with as many people as I can. And that's what I felt like I got a chance to do in Deep Ellum. I got a chance to see everybody there and connect with them in a deeper form um, to create a uh, more of that organic energy, that love, and give it back to them. Uh, I'm a person of reciprocity. You give me love, I try to give that back to you. And when I give you love, I'm not expecting love back from you all the time, but I, I just you know, let you know that there's some good people out here that care for you. Uh, and then to answer your second question with Clay, of course there's gonna be competition. I mean, there was competition with my dad, uh, who had the better signature series. So <laughs> you know, e- even when I was with uh, Nike and Braun and stuff like that, it wasn't, Um, a terrible thing to have healthy competition in this space. Uh, I think it only made us better. And, uh, you know, me and Clay have had short conversations about Anta, but not deep conversations. I think you'll see more collaborations from us. I think you'll see uh, more apparel collaborations from us. There's just another opportunity for us to to build. Um, Anta's huge in China and introducing the brand here in America, that's our next phase. Uh, We're in a competitive pool with some of the best brands in the world. We feel like we're one of the best brands in the world as well. So, um, you know, we have champions there. We feel like it's a winner's brand. We feel like we stand on principles and morality instead of just taking money and, and trying to do whatever you want with it. It's really just geared back to helping out our people. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just great uh, to have a teammate here that I could be on the floor with and also somebody I could be in the boardroom with and uh, making business decisions. So. With Real Talk Sports, thank you so much for your time. You mentioned reciprocating the love. We definitely appreciate your time today. I know you're very big on staying present in the moment. So if you could title this chapter of your life, what would that title be? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I have a, a name yet. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just letting it be. I'm <laughs> just letting it be, just taking it one day at a time. Yeah, but this next chapter in itself, what it means to me is, uh, you know, just all the lessons that I've been able to learn since being in the NBA um and being on my 14th year like i really am an old head now i accept that i'm not an unk yet sort of sort of say but um you know being 14 years in any business and you're starting day one again it, you just try to find that motivation of uh the refresh refreshing uh mentality you need you need to come in with a new verve um and also be able to grow with the people that you were with in the past year and continue to challenge each other in a healthy way and love on each other and anything's possible from there so we do have some carryover from last year, some new faces, but I feel like the culture being built here, um, especially by our upper management, has done amazing things for us as players to be ourselves and continue to be the best version of ourselves on the court. And then if I could um, ask you to elaborate, you mentioned traveling different places with your kids as well. As a dad, what is it like for you to give them those experiences? I used to live overseas because my dad was in the military, and that's such a unique experience. Yeah, it's nothing like it. It's nothing like it. I was climbing in the pyramids uh, with my kids, my two boys. Um, so to have a one-year-old and a three-year-old in the pyramids and we're climbing down, you know, a couple hundred feet, uh, we just we just took in those moments as much as we could and uh, be as patient with the kids, <laughs> um, you know, just walking down there because, yes, they're aware of what's going on, but I know that it'll make more sense as they get older. Uh, so I'm glad that we can create those memories now. And I finally got a chance to vacation uh, since I think like 2018, 2017. Uh, just every summer has felt like rehab or getting ready for the season or just, you know, the season starting around around the corner. So I'm just grateful that I wasn't uh, uh, able to do that. We got time for one more. Kyrie, I think most people would uh, consider you and Luca and uh, Clay to be guards, uh, although Luca has a power forward's body. Uh, how would you, 
How do you envision that? Don't let Luca hear that shit, man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How do you he's a guard it? with a power forward's body. I mean, Come on, bro. He's a big dude. He's a big yeah, dude. Okay, I guess. How how do you envision that playing out on the court, uh, not only offensively but defensively? Uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting figuring out process. Um, yeah, we're starting from day one together, which I'm grateful for. But the rhythm uh, that we're going to need in order to beat the best of the best is going to have to be at a different level than it was last year. Um, you know, but I, I feel like we all have great attitudes towards one another in terms of our skill sets and how great we are. Um, you know, watching guys' faces light up when Clay makes a shot, and whether it be a, a difficult shot for most of us, it looks easy for him. And when you're around someone that that's special at a craft and a skill set, it's, it's nothing like asking that person about how, what makes them great. What can, why does he continue to stay motivated at what he does? And, and I feel like the same thing for Luca, and same thing for myself. We all are curious about the game and how we continue to get better, but we're also very selfless in our approach to wanting, each other, wanting to see each other do well and ultimately win basketball games for the team. Uh, so I know a lot of the um, pressure or the eyes are gonna be on me and Clay and Luca, but for us, we've done a great job, even just from afar, just distributing that responsibility um, because I'm, I'm gonna be needed in different situations. He's gonna be needed in different situations, meaning Clay, Luca's gonna be needed to be in different situations and uh, I think we all bring a different expertise and now when you mesh that all together I think you know this season would be great for us to translate that into wins and also being able to respond to losses in difficult times uh, it's not going to be a perfect season it's not going to be pretty all the time I know I've gone on record saying this all last year um, but we just have to stay poised continue to trust one another and just have fun at um you know, going after something bigger than ourselves. Yeah, we'll all preach championship in here, but it's only going to be a few people that are going to believe in that. Um, and that's just the real of it. So us, you know, sitting up here and all the guys in the locker room, everybody that's part of our staff and organization that has that unwavering belief, we need to continue to build on those relationships. And everything else is pretty much a distraction. So I'm excited to get started with our veteran group and a few of the young guys we have um, on this championship run.